So hello everybody. Today we are back with our session on CP3. So we have Shivangi ma'am today with us. So ma'am, my first question is: Can you tell us something about the pattern of CP3 examination? So basically, CP3 is a three hours exam, um, and in case of I F O A, you receive an advance scenario, which you receive three working days prior to the examination. You have to go through the advance scenario. And during the day of exam, you get the exam paper, which is a build on the advanced scenario. And uh, so, two questions are there. Question one is eighty marks, which is the most important part, communication part, where you have to uh, write the entire communication in case of CPT. And question two contains uh, three to four parts, um, which is your reflective questions. Uh, in order to, uh, that gives you basically the reflect uh, reflection on. The communication that you have done, the eighty marks communication that you have done. So the split is eighty plus twenty, or your it was ninety plus ten. This is the entire structure. In case of IA examination, you see the advanced scenario material on the real exam itself. That is at the type of exam with the exam paper itself. Okay. So my next question to you is, as the paper is termed as communication practice, so what does it mean? So basically, uh, you will get any type of advanced scenario. And you don't have to refer to internet. That is what they say. Whatever is mentioned in the scenario material, it can be on pension, it can be on cryptocurrency, it can be on anything. You don't have to refer to any other sources, or you don't have to use any different knowledge that you have uh, from your working experience. Whatever is given, you have to go through it, understand it, and then in the question, which is a build up one, maybe they will be asking to write a letter to your colleague, maybe to your manager, maybe to. The trustees, or maybe to a policy holder, so it can be anything. You have to basically simplify the entire technical debate in a very simple language, which is understandable and at the same time presentable to the audience. Okay, so ma'am, how much time does it take to complete the curriculum in total? So basically, uh, if you give approximately 1.5 hours of time, um, and every day you can give two hours. On weekends, I think you should sit for three hours and give a mock test. This is very important in CP3 to practice writing because if you just imagine points in your mind, you will not be able to write it in the day of the on the day of the exam. So you need to be very much confident about your writing skill and you need to practice a lot. So I think one one point five minutes is good enough for the entire preparation. Okay. So what should be the study plan for the students? Like how to approach the paper of CP3? So basically. Uh, the past week was a very important in case of IIT and IIT both. Uh, you need to have a structured thinking. So when you are reading the advanced scenario, read it with a very uh, open uh, mind, um, so that you can answer from both the ends and uh, understand the material. Uh, underline the jargons if you find any, and try to you know uh, find the easy words uh, which can explain the difficult uh, words which are there. Again, on the day of exam, when you get the exam paper, you should have a structured thinking in the sense that you should be able to find out three to four objectives because there are no more than three to four objectives in all the papers, and try to divide uh, it into three to four sections. So plan your paper first. Uh, it will take you not more than ten to fifteen minutes to plan your paper. Maintain the logical flow, which is very important, within the sections and between the sections also. Don't use a lot of numbers. Uh, don't use a lot of graphs and tables. Try to filter out information because I feel this is very important in case of CPT because students generally miss. They are not able to filter out a lot of information. They go with the important points and try to explain it in your own words. Don't try to include everything which is given in the advanced material. Also, uh, try to understand the layout and the format of different type of communications like a letter or a memo or a press release. It can be anything. Maintain a tone, a professional tone. Uh, do not look down upon uh, people who don't understand technical jargon. So it should have a very good professional tone. At the same time, you can adjust the tone as per the audience. If it's a uh, pensioner or if it's a trustee, you need to adjust your writing skills. Uh, have a good conclusion and good introduction uh, start. Give a nice title. All of these things add marks. And uh, obviously, while preparing for the paper, try to. Uh, get reviewed from your peers or maybe some mentors because you are not able to judge your paper on your own. So make sure you get it uh, evaluated by someone who is senior to you so that you get a good feedback from them. So uh, and also try to maintain the word limit. Approximately 800 to 900 should be the word limit. Okay. So ma'am, uh, like 
an average working professional who uh, plans to appear for the CP3 exam, they generally have one to two hours to spend with their studies and uh, if they start maybe two months before the exam or maybe three months before the exam so is the time sufficient and like how should they proceed? Yes, uh, easily I think you can easily if you are putting in uh, one or two hours every day and that also you are giving uh, two months easily you can complete the thing is that in case of uh, CP3 it's very important that you uh, at least give two hours because you need to read this advanced material, you need to read the question paper, you need to understand. So one hour uh, at a stretch is a shorter duration. Maybe sitting for longer hours is better. Maybe every day you're not putting it, but the day is not putting it, you should at least give two hours minimum to the paper. That is what I mean. Okay. So my next question to you is what are the things the students they generally ignore in the CP3 exam? So I feel uh, the 10 mark question earlier on now it's 20 marks so it's all the more important. The second question which is the reflective question. So students generally ignore that but and I see they lose a lot of marks over there. So it's very important while practicing the past papers you can make your own notes. Um, you can have it uh, like for different type of questions like what is the structure of communication, then which jargons you do not use, uh, why you use different types of graph, uh, what graphs you use. So all of these common, what tone you follow, so all of these common questions you can make a list of them, write uh, important keywords because in examination they will look out for these keywords. Uh, if you're just elaborate, they will not give you the marks. So I think out of those 10 marks earlier, students used to score 3 mark or 4 mark, which is very less, and they end up failing CP3 by 1 or 2 marks. Now it is 20 marks, so it's all the more important that you put in effort in that second question and then you are practicing or giving box. So please make sure that you also write the second question and you have the proper length in mind for a 4 mark or for a 6 mark or a 2 mark question. What should be the length? You need to keep that also in mind. Uh, do not ignore that for the task moment. Practice it from day one itself. That is very, very important. Okay. Thank you.